Now a video is showing a group of 200 South African firemen and officials dancing and singing as they arrived in Canada to help their country battle its current wildfire crisis has gone viral. The group broke into song and dance to communicate their experience and feelings towards the humanitarian mission and potential excitement uh, for the opportunity. It's garnered worldwide attention with many praising uh, the actions, uh, the traveling humanitarians uh, for their bravery and talent. Canada, of course, currently battling wildfires across the country that have displaced thousands and have burned through millions of hectares of land. Trevor Abrahams is the MD of Working on Fire, a government-funded expanded public works uh, program that aims to also create jobs and alleviate poverty. He joins us now. Trevor, uh, great to have you with us as always. Uh, so was this just spontaneous uh, signal? it seems to have uh, gathered a, a lot of attention yes it certainly has gathered the international attention but it's very common in our firefighters they're known for their singing and, and, and energy and dancing um, in past deployments and this is the fifth that we have here in Canada we've been noted for our firefighters who go out to the fire line singing in the morning dancing and after a full day's work on the fire line coming back still singing um, uh, politicians here have raised it with me, so they can't believe it. And, and it just it does attract the kind of public attention that's happened this occasion. Yeah, the, the Canis, uh, Canadians haven't seen much like it. And, and I'm sure it really boosts morale and, and helps them do their job. So I think most of these videos were taken at the airport or uh, one in a, in a parking lot. Is this just after they landed? Was it last weekend? Yeah, so the, we landed on Sunday morning at 3.30 in the morning. And that's the video that you're seeing screen there at the moment. And they were just busy waiting for the buses to take them to their hotel. And the second video in the parking lot was just as they were going off to the fire. So it's a bit about the excitement of actually getting uh, onto the fire line and showing what they can do. These are young people which we, we recruit and trained into skilled uh, firefighters. And obviously for them, it's a big uh, recognition uh, both here at home and particularly on the international stage that they are relied on to assist in, in times of need. I, I'm sure we're not the only country that is there, but do you think it's also touched people that a country like South Africa with less resources than Canada is able to send more than 200 firefighters at this time to help? Well, there are other firefighters from the US, from Australia, New Zealand, and they're asking for more and some have come in from France too. Um, we have 200 firefighters and 15 management here. And on the 14th of June, another 200 firefighters and 13 managers are coming across also and landing on the 15th year in Alberta. So the demand is, is a huge because this is an unprecedented fire season. Across Canada, they've had some 2,418 fires so far. They've lost about 4.5 million hectares of uh, forest area and many properties and some towns have just had to be abandoned. And if you look at 4.5 million hectares, I mean, that's about 9 million soccer fields. So yeah, you get a huge. sense of the, the, the damage. In Alberta alone, they've had 621 fires so far. And this is early in their fire season, which typically goes until about September. And right now we have 74 fires active at the moment. And unfortunately, in some parts of Alberta, the weather's actually going in the wrong direction. It's getting hotter, drier. And in the area where our teams are deployed near Edison, uh, there's an evacuation order out for the town of Ex Edison at the moment. So, so thank you. I was going to say, I'm sure the conditions are grueling. Uh, can you tell us what it's like to be there? What it's like to fire, uh, to battle these incredible fires? And is everybody okay? Yes, it's, it's a very hot environment now. It's about 29, 30 degrees Celsius. So it's a hot environment. It's getting windier, but there's a very high emphasis on safety. So yesterday afternoon, when the winds got unstable and high, all the fire crews were withdrawn from the fire line. So in other words, while they might still be bombing from the air, the ground crews were removed because the kind of conditions the ground were just too unstable. So typically in these large fires, they try and secure a boundary 
and try and keep the, the fire within that boundary and then move towards the center. But when the weather gets uh, chaotic as it is at the moment, you can get those boundaries being breached. And obviously then they have to try and take action to secure assets and lives and property mm. and animals. Um, so it's, it's quite a sophisticated operation in terms of how the planning operates. And we become part of a larger team of other firefighters on the ground, of aerial resources, of bulldozers, weather uh, technicians who monitor the weather and predict the fire behavior. And of course, the entire logistical planning of housing and catering to all these mm. personnel. Yeah, incredible coordination. So uh, my final question then, where are you being housed? Um, I'm sure this is a, an expensive exercise. Is, is there support from Canada itself or do we pay for our firefighters that are helping? No, our entire deployment cost is covered by Canada. So we are currently split at three different locations. Um, in the one location, they've got uh, uh, prefabs that are set up where people have small lodgings, rooms, and a, a communal kitchen and bathrooms and, and complete, complete camp setup. Um, in the other areas, you have a similar setup in terms of kitchen, command center, ablutions, uh, but you actually have tents, one man tents. So we get issued with equipment here when we land in Alberta part of which is a one-man tent, a mattress, a sleeping bag, and some other equipment like helmets and lights and gloves. Um, so we are equipped, so we're out in the bush, if you like, um, and depending on the nature of the fire and the size of the camp that's been set up to deal with it, um, you might find some prefab uh, accommodation or you camp out. All right, well, I mean, I'm sure the Canadians are really appreciative. Hopefully this is invaluable experience. They, they can come back uh, with to South Africa and hopefully everybody stays safe. Uh, thank you for that. Working on fires, MD uh, there, Trevor Abrams.